How's it guys? RivetWiz here. Today I'll be showing you how to create this custom base with a stop column with chamfers. You can go and edit all these parameters and it will automatically update within this specific family that we've created. So please stay tuned guys. Okay, let's start by creating our stop column base so if you don't know how to add a base in a column just go and have a look at some of my beginner tutorials it will show you exactly how to do that so once you've added in your base doesn't matter what size it is you can go here to edit family and then we can just go into the floor plan so we can see how it is orientated before we edit anything let's go file save as and save the family then you can call it maybe stop column base whatever you'd like and you just save it okay and then we go here to family types so currently we have two types let's just delete that one we don't need that one for the moment and now we only have one type or one size and we say OK. Now to add in the stop column, we already have the base. We will go here to extrusion. And then choose the rectangle. And then we just draw in a rectangle. Maybe 380 by 380. Doesn't matter for the moment. You can choose any size. Then we just move it to the midpoints of this existing reference planes and then here on the right you'll see extrusion start will be zero and extrusion end you just make it 500 for now and say finish so if you go into your 3d view you'll see it displayed like that now what we want to do is put in reference planes so if you click on this reference plane copy it co on your keyboard just copy it over same with the ones in the vertical plane then we're going to click on this um, extrusion we just created go to edit extrusion and then we're going to align these uh, pink lines to the reference planes we just created to lock them so you press a l on your keyboard make sure that box is ticked uh, the lock box and then we click on the reference plane and you click on the line and then same here you do the same there or just make sure it's locked click there and there now all of it's locked you can confirm that by clicking on the lines and you can see all of them is locked then we just press finish again now we're going to dimension this so you press di on your keyboard dimension the reference planes like that and also like that then just make that equal and equal then we do another dimension for the full uh, width and length so now we're going to create the parameter so this is the length of the base and this is the width of the base so we're going to have the length of the stop column and the width of the stop column so click here you go to create parameter we say stub width. I leave everything as is and just say OK. We do the same here. Call this one stub length. And we say OK. Now that we've done that, let's just check if it works. So I'm just going to double click on this dimension and make it 500. So we can see it snaps. So once you update it, the stop column updates with it. Okay, just undo. So just to see if it works. So now we want to go into the front view to see the height of the stop column. And this is the 500 we created earlier. So what you want to do here is press the I on your keyboard. Make sure you click on the reference plane. You click at the top here and just click anywhere to get that dimension. Now we want to make 
this dimension a parameter like we did for the width and the length lengths so you're going to click create parameter i'm going to say stub height and we're going to leave everything as is and say okay so now if i double click this and i make that 800 it snaps upwards and that is what we want okay so let's leave it like that then you'll see that the material differs this material is currently set at the concrete cast in so what we can do is click on this one just go and click there at, on that button and choose structural material and then it will update it to the same material so that these two are joined okay now we can go here at family types and you can see all the different parameters we've created now those three stub stub height stub length and stub width okay so now we can go a step further and if we just go into the 3d we can create a chamfer around here on the top of this stub column okay so how you do that is you go to file we need to create a profile so we're going to create a profile which is basically a two-dimensional chamfer which we will import into this drawing and then uh, bring it in as a sweep okay so we're going to go new family then we're going to look for metric profile if you are using the imperial system yours will just be um, in, obviously imperial and then profile so this one is metric profile we're going to say open so now it's giving me a um, x and a y plane and this is the center point that this chamfer is going to be imported in okay so we want to create the chamfer maybe towards the left bottom or the right bottom doesn't make um doesn't make a difference which one you do bottom left or bottom right we can always flip it around i'll show you once we've created this but if you create it to the top side we're not going to be able to create the instance that we want okay so as easy as this we go to line and then we're going to just sketch a 25 mil chamfer like this so you can see you have three lines then we want to copy our reference planes again or rather these ones i see you can't copy so just place press rp on your keyboard for reference plane so you draw in two new reference planes i'll just stretch gym so you can see it so now we want to lock these to the corner and to the corner here so you're going to press a l on the keyboard make sure it's locked again i'm going to click the reference plane and then we're going to hover here until it has that dot and we lock it so you can see it's locked same with this side and we lock it now we're going to dimension these two like that your x and y planes then we're going to click on them or actually on one of them for now and say create parameter and we will call this chamfer and i'll click on this one and i'll also make this chamfer so now if we go and edit one of these chamfers make that 50 you can see it updates so we know it's working so let's just change it back to 25 okay so now that we've done this we can save as this as a family and just call it chamfer profile so that you know it's a profile which is basically in two dimensional okay now that we've done that we'll say load into project so we're going to load it into our stop column base which is the one that we've just the family that we're busy editing so we're going to say okay now it's loaded in and obviously it seems like nothing has happened but you'll see here if you go to families and profiles there the chamfer has been loaded in okay so keep that in mind now we want to create a chamfer and we're going to use a void to create the chamfer 
So let's just go into the three space. It's just a lot easier and um, it's just better to view it this way. So if you go and click here on create, you're going to find here it says void forms. You're going to click on that and we're going to do the void sweep. Okay, because we want to follow a certain parameter. So we're going to click on this and then we want to say pick path. Okay, so you pick path and then pick 3D edges. It would be probably already selected. So now you can see once I hover over a edge, it gives me the opportunity to select it. So I'm going to click on it and I'm going to select all of these edges. Now you'll see these lines are currently pink and just make sure if you're within this specific mode make sure that you tick this box that says cut with voids when loaded because if you load this into your project it would already cut the concrete so we want that to happen okay so then just say finish edit mode now you'll see the pink lines has changed to black so now it wants us to select the specific profile so we're going to click here at the top by the drop down menu and say chamfer profile this is the profile that we have created earlier so now you'll see that it's to the wrong direction but that's okay like i said earlier we can just flip it so go here to your properties and just flip it and then you can see it flips to the inside because we want to cut the concrete within this this specific parameter now that we've done that we can just say finish edit mode and there you'll see we've created our chamfer okay but now we want the chamfer to be able to be edit or to be edited within your um, rivet file once you've loaded it or your rivet project rather so if i double click on the chamfer profile here we can edit this profile so if i edit it and i make it 50 you can see it works but once i load this into the project we won't have access to this profile because it's within this family so what you want to do is just change that back to 25 we will go here associate family parameter we'll click that and we want to create a new parameter which is called chamfer so we're going to say new parameter and we will call it chamfer then we're going to say okay and okay again now you'll see it's grayed out which means this specific dimension of the profile is associated with our family or with our parameter within this family so if i say apply and okay and i go here to family types I'll find the chamfer under the dimension sections. So if I click here and I make this 50 now and I say apply, you'll see that it will be changed or edited. Okay, so now that we know all our parameters work and our dimensions, when we edit it, we can now load it into our project. So we're going to go load into project and make sure you load it into your rivet file, the RVT file, and not the rfa file so we're going to say okay and then it loads into this file if i click you'll see it has created this specific um, base but now it doesn't look like it's done anything it's because the section box might be cutting off this so let's just change that to level one there we are so now you can see there's our chamfered uh, stop column with our foundation so if i click on this one and i change it to the stop column base which is that one there you'll see it automatically attaches to the bottom of this column so now you can see this works perfectly so if you click on this and you go to edit you'll find all these parameters that we've created so now you can go and rename this base um, to call it whatever you'd like and you can change let's make that 500 to stop length and width and the chamfer we want 25 so if we say apply you can see it has changed this plinth or stop column size 
we can also change the base size. Let's make that two meters and two meters, and we make the foundation maybe 500 also. And say apply. Oh, sorry, that should have been two meters, not 200. Say apply and okay. So there you can see that has also changed. Let me just switch on the section box or pull it down a bit. There we go. Now you can see it better. So yeah, guys, that is how you can create this. And this will save you a lot of time when you're doing project with uh, stop columns. So once again, thank you for all your support. If you do like this video, please um, like and subscribe. It would really help me a lot. And um, thank you for all your support. See you in the next one. Cheers, guys.